All right, you guys, we are talking about a topic today that you guys requested a couple of videos back regarding the STI's DCCD and the VDC controls when it comes to these cars. Now, I know the DCCD can be a little frightening if you don't know how to use it, but if you know how to use it properly, it's a good tool to have because let's be honest, it is a big selling point of the car. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna hang out in the garage for about five to seven minutes. We're gonna talk about both of these modules, how to use them, what they do, uh, the settings that I use them on, and then we're gonna hop into STI, we're gonna go take it out and uh, play with some of the controls a little bit just so you guys can get some immediate feedback from uh, just how I use them. So with that, let's just jump right into it. All right, so we're gonna start this video with the DCCD. That's gonna be the driver controlled center diff. Now, when it comes to STIs, if you have an 04 or an 05 STI, you're gonna have a different torque split than you are with the 06 plus. Now with the 04 and 05 STI, your torque split's gonna be 35% to the front, 65% to the rear. And with the 06 plus, you're gonna see 41% of that torque up to the front and 59% over to the rear. So it's not an actual 50-50 torque split like everyone thinks it is. Um, it is a little biased to the rear, not as much as it used to be, but the, uh, the 04, 05s are a little more rear biased, so they are a little more fun in my opinion. So the DCCD essentially allows you the controller of the car to set specific parameters within that DCCD to kind of change where the torque goes uh, depending on the driving conditions in which you're driving in and what you set it on. So with the DCCD, you have two settings of both auto and manual. Now in the auto setting, you can go auto plus or auto minus, but we're gonna get into that in a second. The manual settings gives you a lot more free range to be able to go in there and adjust that torque to however you want it. But I do wanna make one thing clear. This is not a power split. It is not taking your horsepower and dividing it 41% and 59%. It's, that's not the case, that's not what it's doing. So let's just throw that myth right out the window right now. So essentially why you wanna play with the DCCD is it really increases the handling capabilities of the car when you're using it, especially on different road surfaces. So let's start with auto mode. So if you just leave it in auto, no minus, no plus, the car is gonna dictate what it thinks is the best parameters for handling, depending on changing conditions that can be road, weather, whatever you're driving in. Now, when it comes to auto plus and auto minus, these are the parameters that I suggest you guys play with to get a little more familiar with the DCCD if you're not already too familiar with it. So with the auto plus setting, this is gonna keep more of the power up to the front and it's gonna bias the front versus the rear of the car. This is gonna be used for kind of slippery conditions if it's snowy, a little icy, maybe a little rainy, those worst weather conditions, or if you're on some gravel roads, some dirt roads or anything like that and you want a little bit more traction and handling out of the car, that's what you're gonna to wanna to set that DCCD to. Now, if you're gonna to wanna to set it to that auto minus setting, that's gonna bias the torque more to the rear than it is going to be to the front. So this is gonna be more of a sportier setting. Um, it'll increase your cornering and your handling a little bit more. So if you do wanna play with it, I suggest throwing it in that minus and uh, giving it a whirl. Give it a test drive, see how you like it. So most drivers overall are gonna benefit from leaving the DCCD in auto and letting the car's ECU and sensors do its thing for you. Now those sensors that I talked about earlier, those are going to include yaw, G-force, braking, and throttle inputs to dictate what it thinks is the best parameters for you when you're using that DCCD. In certain conditions, such as snow and gravel, you may find that putting it in manual with a high lockup ratio will provide the most stable and predictable driving for you. Now, in special driving conditions, you may find that putting that rear diff in manual will provide more predictable and better overall driving characteristics of the car. So personally, I use the DCCD quite often in my car. Generally, I leave it in the auto setting biased to the rear. So auto minus is generally what I drive in on nicer days like this. Now, when it's a little rainy, when it's a little icy, when it's a little snowy, I'll generally go up to that auto plus just because I want the best handling out of the car that I can get from it. The DCCD is a huge selling point to these STIs and I really suggest that you guys jump in it and start playing with it a little bit, but don't get too excited. We're gonna keep going into it. So personally, like I said, across many of my videos, I've had a huge plethora of Subarus. This is my seventh STI, so I've had a good amount of time being able to play with that DCCD and find the characteristics that I like based off of my driving style and my driving parameters. Now, when I used to race autocross, my old 07 
11 STI, that was a big time for me to learn how to use that DCCD because I was on a closed track. I was away from any potential hazards and it was the safest opportunity to do so. I do not recommend you guys put it in manual and try to find your preferred settings out on the streets because you're really gonna have to dig into the car a little bit to really start feeling some of the changes that it's gonna be doing to the drivetrain system. So if you are wanting to learn, I suggest going to the track, your local autocross event, your local time attack events, whatever you guys have near you, or if you have your own property and you can go hoon in the backyard, go do that. But I do wanna tell you guys, now, um, if you do not feel comfortable playing with the DCCD and you feel like you are going to break something, you feel like you are going to destroy stuff, don't play with it too much. Just leave it in auto. Just play with the plus and the minus and just leave it at that. You can damage your drivetrain if you don't know how to properly play with it. Like I said, ease your way into it. Don't go ripping around a corner at 60 miles an hour with the diff locked pulling e-brakes, trying to do donuts, whatever you're trying to do. You can seriously cause damage to diffs and the diffs are really not cheap. They are severely not cheap. That R180 back there is, woo, woo, if you're trying to buy a brand new one, you're looking at uh, I think around 12 to $1,400. So just be mindful of that. To start out, I suggest you go into that auto setting. You go to that plus, you go to that minus. You see which one you like a little bit more based off of how you drive. And then once you get more comfortable with that, jump over to the manual settings and just play around in either a closed location setting and just get a better feel for it. Just don't just don't go ripping around pulling e-brakes with your rear diff or with your diff locked trying to trying to do some donuts or some power slides. I do want to keep this very, very, very overviewic. I don't want to go too much into the minute details because we could be sitting here talking about this DCC DCCD system for hours. There is a whole lot that goes into this and I'll link below some really good NASIOC forms if anyone does want to dive deeper and learn more about the DCC DCCD system. That's getting very difficult to say after you say it a whole bunch. Jeez. But with that, let's jump into the VDC system, which is going to be that sport, sport sharp and intelligent drive mode. So now we're going to talk about Subaru's VDC module. So if you don't know what VDC stands for, it is going to be that vehicle dynamic control. It's going to be that little twisty knob right above your uh, differential settings. So with that, you have three parameters, which are intelligent, sport, and sport sharp. Let's, we're going to talk about essentially what the VDC does, but we're going to talk about the modes with it. So intelligent mode is for immediate driving response and more environmentally friendly performance. Throttle mapping balances smoothness and efficiency throughout the enhanced level of control. So essentially you're lowering your boost to uh, not eat as much gas. So, I mean, I don't ever use intelligent mode. Um, before my car was tuned, it was actually the intelligent sport and sport sharp. Now it's my different maps from when I was pro tuned. But when it was that, I never, never used intelligent mode. I guess if you wanna save a little bit of fuel um, when you're sitting in traffic, it's a good option for you. Next, we have sport mode. So this is the default setting. When you first turn on the car, it defaults to sport mode. So sport mode delivers smooth engine performance at pretty much any driving speed. Uh, the effect is an immediate linear response that brings to life the refined torque, rich response, and smoothness of the engine. That is directly from Subaru, which I don't, it's not very linear in my opinion. If you have ever put your car in sport mode and gone to drive it, you know damn well that it's not linear. We all know it's not linear. Don't try to fool us with your fake marketing. And last one is Sport Sharp. So Sport Sharp is essentially a more responsive throttle mapping that it changes. Um, essentially, you're getting into boost quicker, so it is changing throttle percentage. But I wanna dive into that because the VDC is kind of a lie. It's kind of a lie if you haven't uh, played with it too much. So I was very curious about this a couple years ago, and when my old 08 STI was getting pro-tuned, I asked the tuner about this, and I was kind of curious. I was like, hey, how does, the, how does the VDC module actually work? Now, when it comes to the VDC module, all it's doing is changing the throttle percentage, and it's not actually changing any type of mapping on the car. So essentially, we'll say you're in sport mode, and we'll say zero to 100% is your normal throttle range. Now, if you go into intelligent mode, it's going to bring that back, and we'll say your max throttle on that is going to be 60%. So that way when you're pushing the pedal down 20% or when you're pushing the pedal down 100% in intelligent mode, it is essentially a 60% of sport mode. And then that goes the opposite way with sport sharp. So if you're pushing the throttle in 20% on sport sharp, that would actually be about 40 to 45% on sport mode. Now these aren't the the exact correlation translations between the two modes, but that's essentially what it's doing just as a uh, 
as a talking piece so that way it's a little easier to understand. So it's not actually changing any type of mapping in the car, it's just changing the throttle percentage of what you're actually pushing on the gas. But these different modes will enable you to get a little different type of power response out of the car um, if you are still on those factory maps. Um, like I said, intelligent mode is pretty good for traffic if you don't want to eat through too much fuel and you want to try to restrict yourself from getting on the car too much. Uh, sport is pretty much just a daily driver level of when I had the car in that aspect. I stayed in sport and then sport sharp is for your uh when, when you're really trying to get on the beans, when you're really trying to get the beans and you want to play with it. So with that, uh, let's get the camera moved into the STI behind me. Let's go play with some of these differential settings and see if we can notice a significant difference between the modes. All right, guys, we are in the STI now. So we are going to start playing with some of the differential controls. So I'm going to throw it in auto minus. So that's going to bias that power back to the rear of the car a little bit. So we're going to hop on the freeway. There's a couple of like fun turns Ugh. so we're gonna go hit up and just play with the play with the auto settings a little bit i'm not gonna play with the manual settings because i'm not on a track and i'm not really gonna see any benefit of playing with those manual settings right now so we're mainly going to stick with auto plus and auto minus for this little drive so in the auto minus setting like i said it biases a lot of the power to the rear It's so fun. So, I mean, just putting it in auto minus makes the car feel a lot sportier. I feel like I have more grip than I would in auto plus because it's trying to account for all of the little, all the variables. So just telling the car, hey, bias the power to the rear of the car. <laughs> it just it gives it such a more I don't want to say track oriented feel but it feels more track oriented and sport oriented when the power is actually going to the back wheels a little bit more than the front now like I said it's not power that's being transmitted and I apologize for saying that it's the torque but the torque is really the main it's the biggest fun factor of a car is just the torque aspect of it so I'm gonna hop off the freeway we're gonna double back around we're gonna throw in auto plus and see if I can really notice a difference. And then we'll go one more time in just auto. What just beeped at me? Something beeped? Oh, my oil pressure beeped. Why did my oil pressure beep? Did I blow up? I didn't blow up. We not blown up. Oil pressure good. We had, we had 20 PSI, we good. So let's throw in auto plus now. So we are now in auto plus. And let's go do what we just did again. Now, Auto Plus is, like I said, it's gonna be for more or less inclement weather conditions um, and loose surfaces such as snow, gravel, rain, or um, if you want it to understeer a little bit more. So I'm gonna be a little careful this time when I'm driving the car, just because I don't want anything negative to happen. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> oh God, I don't like it. I do not feel as confident. I do not feel as confident as I did before. Is it still fun? Yes. Um, so Auto Plus, when it's dry out in good weather condition, I don't recommend like getting on it a lot. I definitely don't feel as confident as I did before. I'm gonna throw it back in auto. I don't, ah, it's not like a huge difference, but I really don't feel as confident as I would. So just in auto mode, the car's taking into effect all of the parameters that it's seeing with it. The auto minus is so much more fun. It gets, oh, oh, I suggest that. If you guys are new to the DCCD aspect and you just got your STI and your, let's say your stock modified, whatever you are, throw in auto minus and go play with it a little bit. Throw in auto plus and go play with it. You'll see what I'm talking about, how the, the level of confidence that you have between auto plus and auto minus changes. And it's not, you can't really tell a major difference when it's in just auto. I mean, I keep it in auto if it's rainy. If it's a nice day out like this, I'll keep it in auto minus, but if you're new to it, go play with it a little bit. Hop on the freeway, um, keep within the speed limits, jump on some on-ramps, get some turns, whatever you gotta do, um, just daily drive it. Daily drive it, play with the settings a little bit and get used to it. 
But I promise you guys, if you haven't messed with the DCCD, it's well worth it. Now, I'm not gonna be playing with the VDC control on my car because I always leave mine in sport mode, which is, well, mine's tuned for all the different parameters. So like I've said before, my intelligent mode's 13 PSI. My sport mode is 16 PSI, and then my sport sharp is 21 PSI. So with that, just make sure, it's around those intervals. I don't know if those are the exact numbers, but I'm not gonna be playing with the VDC controls um, just because they're not gonna really make a difference of what I'm doing versus what you guys are gonna be doing if you are on a stock map. Okay guys, so with that, um, we made it back to the garage. Um, I hope this video helps some of you with the DCCD and the VDC aspects of the car. Now, like I said, go out, play with the car a little bit. Um, if you're gonna jump into that manual mode and you wanna play with it, I do suggest going to a closed event track to be able to do that one because you're, I would not suggest going around the street because you're really gonna have to dig into the car to notice the differences in that manual. But if you are playing with the auto one, you're totally fine. You don't, got, you don't have to get into it too much, but like you guys saw, um, well, just from my experience, I felt a lot more confident getting on it on the freeway um, in that auto minus setting than I did on the auto plus. Uh, the, it felt a little understeery when I was going around the corners uh, versus when I had it in that minus. It felt a lot more connected to the road and it felt like it wanted to stick to where I wanted it to go. Um, and then with the VDC controls, play with those a little bit if you haven't. I'm sure every STI owner has jumped in their car and turned the knobs and pushed the buttons because they wanted to. but. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the information helped you out with these aspects of the car. Don't be afraid to get into it. Just don't get into it too hard if you don't know what you're doing. Anyways, if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button. Ooh, ooh, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, let's do this corner right up somewhere here, this up, up there. Let's do that corner today. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!